Part two, I'm gonna talk about growing for all those plant killers out there. Are you doing it right? Well, first off, the main thing when it comes to picking plants, either for your interior of your home or exterior, is the right plant for the right place. So let's just break down what the difference is between sun and shade, or when it comes to your home, bright light versus low light. Sun is afternoon sun, a direct six hours of sunlight in the outdoors. In your indoor space, when you hear about bright light, that's gonna be a west or south facing window that has bright open light. That's not directly in front of the window, but a room in your home, west or south facing, that has good afternoon light and is bright for pretty much the duration of a day when we have daylight hours, that is. So when it comes to low light or shade, that's morning sun or underneath four hours of light. And with that as well, at your home, that's either a north or east facing window. So we're still getting light, but it's not as much light and it's light that's generally in the morning that's a little bit less intensity overall. The key is no plant grows in the dark. So if you have no light, you would actually have to have an artificial light that would be in there that would be a full spectrum light bulb. So in order for you to grow plants indoors, you do need light, either bright light or low light. So as we mentioned earlier on, Xamifolia, a great plant that does well in bright light to low light, easy to grow. So what we're trying to do is select a plant that fits our location, and if we do that, we're going to have success. Some common mistakes though, you say, hey, I got the right plant for the right place, but I still killed that plant. Well, never put it beside a heating event. If you do put it near a heating vent, block that heating vent. Don't put it behind or on top of a television set that can alter different temperatures that are out there. Even if you had a radiator, keep it away from the radiator. And when I tell you about bright light, don't put it directly in front of a window where it touches the window because on a cold winter day, what'll happen is that cold will go right through the window into the leaf of the plant and kill that stem leaf or even the entire plant itself. So the right plant for the right place. Secondly, when it comes to growing, it's all about water. So water, of course, is key to life, right? All plants require water. The number one killer of plants indoors is overwatering. Too much water, too often. Often people think, hey, I see a plant wilting, I'm gonna go water that plant right away. Well, the key that we really wanna do is to make sure that plants are dry before watering. Well, how do we do that? Well, we use our finger. Our finger is one of the best things out there to measure the moisture in the soil. So by taking your finger, sticking it in the soil, if it feels moist, don't water. If it feels dry and you almost see the plant looking like it's wilting a bit, that's when we're gonna water. The other key though, with many of these types of plants that are in these pots, is that this is a pot inside a pot, also known as a pot cover. Often what'll happen is you'll think it's dry, but then when you look inside the cover, the cover could be filled with water. So we wanna empty that water out, then water. You'll hear me joke with people all the time. Have you ever sat in a bathtub for 24 hours? Well, neither do your plants. So the key is allow them to dry in between watering. So then the question is, well, how often is that? Is that once a week? Is that twice a week? Is that three times a week? Well, there's many different variables. So there's really no one answer to that question because if we have a larger pot with more soil mass, it takes longer to dry out. If we have a week where we have sun every day, it's gonna dry out faster. But if we have a week where it's overcast for the entire day and really and we're in the dead of winter where we only have eight hours or maybe even less of sunlight, you don't have to water as much. So often what we're finding is generally during the months of late October to March, we're cutting back on our watering. And then from mid-March all the way through the summer months, we're increasing our watering because we have longer daylight hours, more light that's out there. The only difference is with inside your home in the winter time is humidity. Because our heaters and vents are going on, with that they can dry a little bit more often. So every home, everyone's going to be different. Use your finger and make sure it's dry before watering. And if you can, to benefit a plant, add a humidifier to your home. By adding that humidifier to your home, you'll increase the moisture in the air, helping out all your interior tropical plants and you as well. So then you're asking yourself, well, Frank, I understand watering now, but why do people spray their plants, miss their plants? Well, the reason why they're doing that, especially during the winter months, is that we don't have enough humidity inside our homes. I spoke about adding a humidifier, but if you don't want to add a humidifier, the occasional misting of a plant will add humidity around that plant and benefit it overall. The other thing that you can do is underneath your plant is you can put a pebble tray. 
and you actually put the pot on top of those pebbles and you fill water in that pebble tray. As that water evaporates around the plant, it creates humidity. And if you wonder why plants do better when they're in groupings, the reason why is there's more humidity as they're all releasing moisture from where they've been watered. And by being in a grouping, they'll do better. They don't need to be socially distanced. Plants do well when they're all together. Now, let's talk about fertilizer. So this is indeed plant food. My preference, of course, is Scott's miracle Grow, but plant food comes in many different forms. This is a liquid that we would actually put into water, and by putting into water, we'd be watering our plants. And the question is, how often do I feed a plant? Well, you only really need to feed plants when they're actively growing. And generally during the months of late October, as I just mentioned, all the way through to that period of March, because we don't have that much daylight hours, we only maybe have to fertilize once a month or once every other month. But during the summer months, when we have longer daylight hours, spring and summer, we're gonna be fertilizing every other week if we really wanna benefit that plant because they're planted inside a soilless mix. We're gonna talk about repotting and soil in a little bit of time as well. But with that fertilization, you don't have to fertilize that often during the winter, but as we get through those spring and summer months, we're increasing our fertilizer. You can use a slow release, which is the pelletized form, or a water soluble. Here at the greenhouse, what we do is we actually put a weak dilution of fertilizer and every time we water, we feed a plant during the spring and summer months. Food is very important and you want a formulated food for tropical plants. And generally a formulated food for tropical plants has a higher first number, which is nitrogen for the green of the plants. So look for a tropical fertilizer. So let's talk about fertilizer. I call this lesson Fertilizer 101. There's three numbers in fertilizer. Those numbers represent nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So you're probably saying, what does that matter? Why should I care? And what do they mean? Nitrogen. Nitrogen is for the top growth. So it's for green. So if we look at fertilizers for lawns, often we see a high first number to get that green growth. Indoor plants, tropical plants, often you're gonna see a higher nitrogen number. Phosphorus, that middle number, is either for roots and or flowers. So if we're looking for a super bloom, boom, we're seeing a higher phosphorus. If we're looking for a transplant fertilizer as well, sometimes it'll have a higher middle number and or phosphorus. Then potassium. Potassium is that last number, which is for general health of a plant. So generally when you see an all-purpose fertilizer, like a 15-30-15, you can see almost an equal balance or a 20-20-20. That's just for the general health of a plant. So what we always say, it's the up, right, nitrogen. It's the down, phosphorus. It's the all around, potassium. So remember that, up, down, all around. Each one of those numbers will tell you the purpose for fertilizer. And if you're totally confused, just get a miracle Grow all-purpose fertilizer and boom, you're in good shape. So the question you may have is, I have no windows, but I wanna add a fern to my bathroom. Ferns are great in the bathroom. The reason why they're great in the bathroom, generally a shower is going on, so it's adding humidity and they'll do very well. But if there is no natural light in that bathroom, we need to add a supplementary light. And with that, you can purchase full spectrum light bulbs that will allow that spectrum of light bulb to help that plant grow and also will provide light for you. But if you just have a regular old light bulb, no windows in the home, and you put a fern in there, it's gonna die. And in that purpose, sometimes faux, fake is okay. So there you have it, the right plant for the right place. Water and allow them to dry out in between watering. And then with fertilizer, only fertilize when they're actively growing. And if you follow all those, you're probably gonna have great success, especially when you get the right plant for the right place. And the benefit of plants, of course, in the winter time, when you're outside and it's a sunny, windy day, you feel that your skin just cracking. And that's where moisture is being pulled away from you. By adding a plant or plants inside your home, adding a humidifier, misting on occasion, more humidity in the air, good for the plants, good for your skin, and you'll look as young as I do.